Hello, Ian Jameson here again, and I'm just so glad that you can join me for a few short moments in the Word of God again today. I hope that you're keeping safe and well as we experience this unfortunate second wave here in the UK. Last Saturday, uh, Rebecca and I had the, the pleasure of going up to Gurdon, which is a small fishing village between Montrose and Aberdeen. Uh, we went there to see some friends and, uh, and have lunch with them there. It was quite nostalgic for me being there because uh, before I moved to London, I used to uh, go and preach quite regularly at the little mission hall there. And if you're watching and you go to the mission hall in Gurdon, then a special hello to you. It was lovely to see the hall and I gave it a wave as I passed by. We had picked some day to be there because uh, if you're listening in Scotland, you'll remember that there was a storm last weekend and the waves were absolutely incredible. It really was. The, the storm gates had been closed on the inner harbour at Gurdon uh, to keep the boats from breaking off uh, from their moorings. It really was just pretty spectacular down there. The waves were crashing against the outer harbour wall and washing right over uh, onto, onto the path below. It was amazing. Uh, to see it. The, w the wind was quite something as Rebecca and I parked up. We could uh, hardly uh, keep ourselves from being blown over as we made our way to the restaurant to meet our friends. It was amazing. After we'd finished our lunch, we went for a little walk just down to see uh, the harbour and, and of course try not to get wet, but uh, I've always loved um, storms and, and spectacular uh, seascapes, so it was it was wonderful to see it. Um, but I, my eye was drawn to a, a monument that I'd never seen before. I've been in Gurdon a few times, but I hadn't noticed it before. And it's called the Farquhar Memorial. And it was built in 1871, uh, erected by a local landowner in memory of his son, William, who he had lost some years before. Uh, he had drowned at sea in the Royal Navy off the coast of China. And he erected this lovely granite pillar uh, in memory of his son. And there in the granite pillar, there is a barometer and a weather gauge uh, to help the, the local fishermen uh, know when storms are coming. But more important than that, on two sides of the pillar are verses from the Bible inscribed. I always love to see uh, verses from scripture in public places, uh, in whatever way they're, they're displayed. And it was lovely to see those two verses there. And then there was a verse also from that wonderful uh, seafarer's hymn, Eternal Father, Strong to Save. It's one of those verses that I'd like to draw our attention to today, and it's found in the book of Psalms. Psalm 93, please, as you could turn to Psalm 93. We'll look at the whole psalm because it's just five verses long, but I want to draw your attention first and foremost to that verse that was there on the pillar, Psalm 93, verse 4. Because as I saw the storm, and as I saw the, the storm gates closed and the, the calm of that inner harbour, you would have had no idea that a storm was raging outside of the calm of these boats. And the, the lesson was so clear and so obvious, especially during this global storm of COVID-19. We are going through a real storm, aren't we? And especially here in the UK and, and our brothers and sisters down south of the border in England have just gone into another lockdown. And the Gospel Hall that I used to go to in London has had to um, think about what it's going to do because... Churches are now no longer going to be able to meet together for worship, having been allowed to for some weeks now, and just so disappointing. And it just feels like a storm that's mighty, a storm that's breaking on our heads. It's so much bigger than we are, and we have no power to stop it or to change it. And what a verse to read uh, with that object lesson of the storm at Gurdon in front of my eyes and with this awareness of COVID-19 around. It just made such an impression on me. Psalm 93 verse 4. Mightier than the thunders of many waters, mightier than the waves of the sea, the Lord on high is mighty. The Lord on high is mighty. Well, friends, I'd like us to read this little psalm together, just five verses. And very simply, I want to say this, that here in these five verses, we have the God of majesty, the God of eternity. And the God of authority. The God of majesty, of eternity and of authority. Of course, last night we had the election over there in the States. And there's so many international and national things happening at the moment that could draw our eye. And yet we know that no matter what the eventual outcome of that election will be, that God sits on the universal throne. That he 
is the one who holds ultimate authority. We won't go into this verse, uh, these verses in any depth or detail, but just to see these three things about our great God, that he's a God of majesty, a God of eternity, and a God of authority. Let's read this psalm together. First of all, majesty. The Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed. He has put on strength as his belt. And now eternity. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. And now authority. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their roaring. Mightier than the thunder of many waters. Mightier than the waves of the sea. The Lord on high is mighty. Your decrees are very trustworthy. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, for evermore. Friends, he's a God of majesty. He's a God of eternity. And he's a God of authority. It's interesting if you look at verse uh, 3 and 4. And it's all about the noise, all about the noise of the storm. Of course, we went down to Gurdon and it was just overwhelming, the noise of the storm. The noise of the storm that you and I are in is also overwhelming. Uh, doesn't matter where we turn, who we speak to, what program we might watch on the television. Everything is about COVID-19. The noise of the storm is deafening. And yet it's interesting that the voice of the Lord is not mentioned the voice of the Lord isn't mentioned. The floods have lifted up their voice, verse 3 says. Lift up their roaring, the thunderings of many waters. But it simply states at the end of verse 4, the Lord on high is mighty. The Lord on high is mighty. Nothing about his voice here in this psalm. Here's the, the, the deafening roar. Here's the thunderings and crashings of the storm. And yet despite all of that, is that sure certain and settled conclusion that underneath and above all of that the lord on high is mighty makes us think of the quiet authority of our savior doesn't it there he was there he was and uh, he was in the boat with them wasn't he in the sea of galilee and the crushing uh, sound of, of the waves of the storm in that small body of water and he says, peace be still. Peace be still, the quiet authority of our Saviour. Peace be still, and immediately there was that pure and perfect calm. I can only imagine what that must have been like to experience it. There was an object lesson of that for me there at Gurdon, with that inner harbour, the gates of protection closed, and those fishing boats in the inner harbour looked as though it was a summer's day. And yet, we know that how much more profound to be there with the disciples in that boat on the Sea of Galilee, peace, be still, and in that silence. Well, it casts our mind back, doesn't it, to the Spirit of God hovering over the face of the waters there in Genesis 1. But it points us forward, it points us forward to Revelation, to the book of Revelation and to chapter 21. To the book of Revelation and chapter 21, we know that all things are coming to an end. All things are coming to an end. Coronavirus included. God will wrap things up. And it says this in Revelation chapter 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more. The sea was no more. Friends, all throughout the Bible, the sea is a, a picture of tumult, of, of chaos of one degree or another, whether it's the storm and, and Jonah being cast into the waters and swallowed by the great fish, or whether it's Peter walking on the water to the Lord and sinking when he sees the might of the waves. And yet here we're told that in the new heaven and the new earth, that element of chaos, that element of flux will be no more. Well, as we read in that section of Psalm 93 about God's authority, there was no mention of his voice. And yet I'd like to finish with a reference to the voice of our Lord Jesus that's found at the beginning of Revelation chapter 21. And John writes this. 
Then I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me, and on turning I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstands one like a son of man, clothed with a long robe. We read about God clothed with a robe, didn't we, in Psalm 93, the robe of majesty. And with a golden sash around his chest, authority. The hairs of his head were white like white uh, wool, like snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burnished bronze refined in a furnace. And his voice, his voice was like the roar of many waters. Like the roar of many waters. The roarings uh, of the, the waves at Gurdon last Saturday and the roarings of the, the waves of Psalm 93 pale in comparison, don't they, to the roar of the many waters of the voice, the perfect voice of our Saviour, a Saviour who possesses majesty, a Saviour who is eternal and a Saviour who has divine and ultimate authority. How good to know a Saviour like that during times like these. Amen.